definitely times to bridge amplifiers and there are times when you might not want to bridge amplifiers, but we're going to talk about the times when you do and the whole thing about getting more power out of the amplifier. But what is bridging? What does it really mean? And what we're doing is we're basically taking the left and right outputs of an amplifier, we're combining them together, and you're basically going to have a push-pull application. So the left channel becomes the push, the right channel becomes the pull, and then you know, on the next waveform they actually swap. So you're using both channels of the amplifier to basically drive the swing of the speaker, the, the, the inward and the outward motion. So it gets kind of interesting, and this is where Ernie's going to you know, really start to cringe and bite his teeth. But we've got to talk about, you know, power-wise and what it does. And everyone talks about, hey, you know, I got my amplifier bridged and it, it's seeing a one-ohm load. Well, what speaker do you have hooked up to it? Well, I got a four-ohm speaker hooked up to it. Well, no, it's seeing a four-ohm load. No, no, I got it bridged and it's seeing a one-ohm load. So you used to go through these arguments all the time. So I kind of want to set the record straight to show you exactly what happens electrically with an amplifier when you bridge it. So here we have the output terminals of the amplifier, and if we take a 4-ohm speaker and we connect the 4-ohm speaker, you've got a plus and a minus terminal, so we're basically going to connect a 4-ohm speaker and another 4-ohm speaker with your plus and minus terminals. Everything's great. So that means right now each of those speakers is getting 50 watts. So it's satisfying that top line up here. So now let's go set, say we got a different speaker. We're going to hook up a 2 ohm speaker to this. Let's go ahead and get our speaker here. Now it's a 2 ohm speaker, and you've got another speaker here, and it's also a 2 ohm, plus, minus, plus, minus. So now when I connect it here, I have a 2 ohm load, so this is 100 watts, and you've got 100 watts. So does that kind of make sense? So that's how it works. As you drop the impedance, you get more power. That's in the stereo mode, and this is going to continue to work the same way when you bridge the amplifier. But what gets really interesting, and I actually have some pictures to show you this, these two terminals right here, the left minus and the right plus, they are the same electrical connection. There is no difference. I mean, these two are basically tied together. Ernie, can you pull up the picture I gave you a little bit ago that shows the... Uh, Amp one, left minus and right positive. So what I've done is I've taken the amplifier that we're going to show you here in just a minute, and I've basically taken an ohm meter and I measure between the right or the, the left negative and the right positive. So you can see the center two terminals. So with an ohm meter, those two are a dead short. So those two terminals are basically interchangeable. It does not matter. You can use one terminal or the other one, but that is the same electrical connection. And if you go to the next picture, amp two left and right, the same thing happens with the next tier down below, which is the amp two output. The left negative and right positive are also tied together. And it should go without saying, but we'll say it anyway. The, uh, all four center terminals on that power block, all four of those are common to chassis ground. So they are all tied together. So that's kind of how we're going to make this bridged amplifier work. Because what we're going to do is we're going to assume these two are together. So let's take a 4 ohm speaker and we're going to bridge the amplifier at 4 ohms. So if we have a 4 ohm speaker, it could basically be represented by a 4 ohm resistor. Kind of the same thing, right? A speaker basically is very similar to resistor, but a speaker is an active load, not a passive load. A speaker will actually have some of its own uh, reactants with the power coming in. So it does change it just a little bit, but for the most part, it works like a 4 ohm load. So we could take this 4 ohm load, take this 4 ohm resistor. It's the same thing as taking a pair of 2 ohms. So would you guys agree that all three of these scenarios are pretty much the same thing? Right, Jacob? Yeah, except so, for speakers reactive, but we're not talking exactly. about Exactly. So you got a pair of 2 ohm resistors in series. It's the same thing as a 4 ohm resistor, which is the same thing basically as a 4 ohm load. Well, as I mentioned with these two center terminals, they are tied together. So if you take this lead and connect to here, now you can see how 4 ohms mono works exactly the way the 2 ohm stereo does. The amplifier does not care which is which. It works exactly the same way. So if this amplifier, we're going to say, 
up here it should do 200 watts by one at four ohms, which is exactly what it does. So we've got 200 watts here, which means each channel is gonna do 100 watts. 100 watts and 100 watts gives you the 200 watts. Two ohms and two ohms gives you the four ohms. So you can see how the amplifier, if you bridge an amplifier, the total impedance is always double what the stereo impedance is. So hopefully that makes sense and that's where the power comes from.